probability of A or B is equals to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. In 11.1, .1, we have events A and B that are mutually exclusive. It is given that the probability of B is equals to 2, the probability of A, and then the probability of A or B is equals to 0 0.57. So let's go ahead and make sense of that. We have the probability of A and B. If two events are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A and B occurring at the same time is zero. If two events are mutually exclusive, they cannot occur at the same time. For instance, it cannot rain and not rain at the same time, at the same place. It is not possible. Those two events are mutually exclusive. It's like you cannot pass and fail at the same time. It's either you passed or you failed. They cannot occur at the same time. So now we can say that the probability of A or B is equals to the probability of A plus the probability of B because the probability of A and B occurring at the same time is zero. So what is the probability of A or B? We have 0 0.57, which is equals to uh, the probability of A plus the probability of B. The probability of B is to the probability of A. So we're going to have two the probability of A. So 0 0.57 is equals to 3, the probability of A. So now it's just a matter of dividing both sides by 3. If we do that, we're going to get the probability of A being equals to 0 0.57 divided by 3, which is equals to 0 0.19 so this is the probability of a but don't, f don't forget we're not looking for the probability of a we are actually looking for the probability of b so now we can say that uh, the probability of b is equals to 2 multiplied by the probability of a which is 0 0.19 if you put that in your calculator you should get 0 0.38 as the probability of b that is 11.1 Let's look at 11.2. A box of 40 calculators is sent to a store by a supplier. The owner of the store is not aware that five of the calculators are defective. Two calculators are selected at random from the box. The first one not being replaced before the second one is selected. Right, and then 11.2.1. What is the probability that the first calculator chosen is not defective? Right, so this is actually easy to compute. The probability will be equal to how many calculators do we have? We have 40 calculators. And then how many calculators do we have that are not defective? Uh, that is uh, 35 because only five calculators are defective. So it means that the remaining 35 are not defective. So the probability of picking a calculator that is not defective will be equal to the number of calculators that are not defective divided by the total number of calculators and this will be equals to uh, 0 0.88 the answer to 11.2.1 let's look at 11.2.2 what is the probability that if two calculators are selected one calculator is defective and the other is not so i want us to really think about this we're looking for the probability that if you take two calculators uh, one after the other uh, one of the calculators will be defective and the other is not going to be defective so this can happen in two ways it's either uh, the first calculator is defective and the second calculator is not defective or uh, the first calculator is not defective and the second calculator is defective so we're saying that is the probability that the first calculator is defective and the second calculator is not defective plus the probability that 
the first calculator is not defective and that the second calculator is defective so let's go ahead and compute this what is the probability that the first calculator is defective what is the probability that the first calculator is defective it is 5 divided by 40 because when you start you're gonna have 40 total calculators and then there's five of that 40 that is defective multiply by now you're picking the second calculator you're not putting the calculator back you're picking the second one so now you are left with 39 calculators how many calculators do you have now that are not defective you still have 35 calculators that are not defective so this is one we uh, our scenario con okay then plus the probability that you start with a calculator that is not defective if you start by picking a calculator that is not defective then the probability of that is 35 divided by 40 multiplied by the probability that uh, the second calculator you pick is defective so now you're left with 39 calculators uh, in total and how many defective calculators do you have now you still have five defective calculators and then if you put that in your calculator you're gonna get 0.22 11.2.22 what is the probability that if two calculators are selected both are defective what is the probability that if two calculators are selected both are defective let's go ahead and find out uh, so the probability will be equals to so you pick in the first calculator uh, when you pick the first calculator and it is defective you have a total of 40 and the number of calculators that are defective is five and you happen to pick the one of the calculators that is uh, defective then the second calculator you're gonna pick now you have a total of 39 but the number of defective calculators that you have is now four instead of five because you've already picked the first one so it's just a matter of multiplying uh, these two numbers uh, if you do that you're gonna get 0 0.01 so it's very very unlikely that uh, if you pick two calculators one after the other you're gonna pick two defective calculators right uh, let's move to 11.3 and 11.3.1 we have four different economic books and three different life sciences books uh, that are required to be placed on a shelf then 11.3.1 if you decide to place any book in any position in how many different ways can you arrange uh, the books on the shelf so how many books do we have we have one two three four five six uh seven right so on the first slot we, we we're not required to pack them in any order on the first slot you have an option of seven books and then on the second slot after you've placed one book you have an option of placing six books after that you're gonna have five four three two one and this is just seven factorial right the answer to 11.3.1 uh, 11.3.2 if two particular books must be placed next to each other in how many different ways can you arrange the books on the shelf so let's go ahead and have our spaces again so we have one two three four five six seven let's say we have books a to g just for the sake of clarity so let's say on the first slot we have a and b right and then they must be close to each other at all times and then on the other slots we can have c uh, c d e f g these two books must always be close to each other these two books must always be close to each other so instead of taking those as two slots let's take them as one slot because they must always be close to each other so now instead of having seven factorial 
we actually have six factorial uh one two three four five six so the six factorial ways we can arrange these six slots now but you have to realize something this first slot there's two factorial ways of arranging it because you can put it as a b or you can put it as b a so you have to say six factorial multiplied by two factorial this six factorial is just us realizing that the two books must always be close to each other so we no longer have seven factorial anymore but six factorial but still if those two books are close to each other we don't have to necessarily arrange them in one way you can say a b or you can say b a so that is why we are multiplying by two factorial right um cotton principle is very interesting you have to think about all possible scenarios you cannot leave anything out 11.3.3 uh, if all the economics books must be placed next to one another and all the life science books must be placed next to one another in how many ways can you arrange the books on the shelf so again let's go ahead and have those slots one two three four and then one two three so let's say we have a b c d e f G. So these are the four economic books. We're taking them as one slot because they must always be next to each other. And these are the three life science books. We're taking them as one slot also because they must always be next to each other. So is it that you're going to start with the economic slot and then the life science or the life science first and then the economics. So there's two factorial ways we can arrange that. But I want you to realize something. Let's get inside the economy. Uh, the economics books so if you get the inside the economics books you're gonna realize that we have one two three four books right so there's four factorial ways of arranging the books inside the economics slot so this is four factorial multiplied by the life science books we have one two three books so there's three factorial ways of arranging the life science books inside the life science slot so this is 3 factorial which is 288